In this video I will talk about properties of block 36 and the entity warping bug or the entity warping behavior. Some people think it's a bug, some people think it's just a behavior. Uh, the behavior is basically if you um, extend a piston then the entity will get pushed over here. That's basically the entity warping bug. That entities um, always teleport in front of a block 36 and I will now tell you what a block 36 is. So first of all some code then some interesting contraptions. So how do we get a block 36? We get a block 36 by powering a piston. Um, if you power a piston, um, you will schedule a block event and later you will process the block event and then you will create a block 36. And that block 36 has um, a tile entity, um, so he stores additional data. In the tile entity he stores a block ID, which is the type of block which is moving. A block 36 is basically just a moving block. Um, block data which is just um, the additional data for the block and um, it is facing in a particular direction um, that is usually um, the direction he is moving in So um, and he has a progress which tells him how far he already went and he has an extending tag and if he's the block and that extending tag tells him whether he resulted out of an extension or a retraction so for example if I extend this piston then um, the block 36 of the moving block will be um, an extending block 36 and if I retract this block then it will be um, a non-extending block 36 and if a block 36 is retracting then he will actually move in the opposite direction of what he's facing uh, so that are basically the attributes um, we will talk about what they do later so you don't need to keep them in mind now um, when um, block 36 is processed in every tick, so he's just a part of the processing order of every tick. So in every tick, user inputs get processed, when tile ticks, when block events, when entities, when tile entities, and in the tile entity phase, um, each block 36 gets um, gets a kind of update, a special update. And we will look at what he does when he gets a special update. So when uh, block 36 gets processed, he will do three things. First of all, he will check whether his progress is already one. And if it is already one, then he will convert to his block form. So we will just take his block ID and block data and then he will convert into that block. Um, after he's done the check, and if he didn't have a progress of one, then he will increase his progress by the 0.5. And then after that, he will do something I call push entities, and we will talk about that extensively in a moment. So basically, when you activate a piston, what happens is the piston generates a block 6 with progress 0. Then later in the same tick, um, tile entities get processed. So that block 6 increases its progress from 0 to 0 0.5. Then in the next tick, the block 6 gets processed again. Then it increases its progress from 0 0.5 to 1. Then it gets processed again. And then it converts into block form. Um, another quick note about um, the NVG data of block 36 because when you um, unload the game um, the block 36 will have some strange NVT data because um, you will have a progress NVT tag but that progress NVT tag will actually not store um, the progress variable it will st uh, store a last progress variable which is basically um, the progress minus one half you can think of it like that so if you unload the game during this first tick um, in the NVT data the piston would have a progress of zero in the second tick uh, in the second tick right here he would have a progress of one and then over here he wouldn't exist anymore and um, additionally he doesn't manage to read out that progress NVT tag so it's completely irrelevant uh, that's just a quick side note um, so basically um, a block 36 if you flip the lever here, then two ticks later he will have the extension. Now, how does the push entities work? That is the interesting stuff. And for that, we first need to determine the hitbox of a block 36 because that will be important. The hitbox of a block 36 is um, quite um, special because it's actually um, usually not completely inside the block 36, but it's um, offset. So um, let's just pretend that on the gold block there's a block 36. And that block 36 has a progress of 0, facing in this direction, and he's extending. Then his hitbox will actually not be um, over gold, uh, gold block, but it will actually be um, in this other block over here. 
So basically, um, when you extend a piston, the block fetch six will generate it. Will get generated in the place um, the block is traveling to. And if the progress is of is zero, then the block isn't even close to the block you want to travel to. So that's why the hitbox is completely offset. So when I click this lever, then instantly a block fetch six will generate get generated over here, but the hitbox will still be over there. When the progress gets to 0 0.5, and then you will have a hitbox like this, except that it will be a full cube that's halfway in between, and I use scrolls as a metaphor because that's the closest I could get. And if the progress reaches 1, then he will actually be inside the hitbox. Of, then the hitbox will be inside the block. Here we have another example, a block that is traveling down, and here we actually can use um, a correct metaphor um, to stone slab, so that would be um, the hitbox of a block fetch 6 down here with a progress of 1 half. And then he goes completely inside the stone block. Now, um, the block fetch 6 doesn't always use the full hitbox, sometimes he uses less than a full hitbox, um, because um, which hitbox he uses depends on the block ID. So if um, the block ID is a block with a full hitbox, then he will use a full hitbox. But if it's something like, for example, a whale, then he will use um, the visual uh, hitbox with black outline around the whale will be used as a hitbox. And in the case of whales, that's quite interesting because whales usually don't have any hitbox, but uh, they have a visual out outline. So right here we have whales, and I can jump off up here because they have no hitbox. But if I um, flick this, then they will get a hitbox, which is a few pixels high, and then I won't be able to jump up here because um, they will have a hitbox, and if I stand on top of these whales, then you can also, oh, that was the next part, you can also see that my Y coordinate is um, 57.125, and if I click this off again, then I will get to 57.0, because I fell down a few pixels, because um, while they were in the block fetch 6 form, they had the visual outline as hitbox, but now, after that, they didn't have any hitbox. Another example is stairs. Stairs have a full cube hitbox, so if I um, move stairs back and forth, then you can't walk up anymore because um, they have a full cube hitbox. Something similar happens with soul sand. Soul sand doesn't have a full hitbox when stationary, but the visual outline is a full cube, so um, when you flick it, then they will get a larger hitbox, and then you will glitch through the soul sand. And another object particularly interesting one is um, fences. Fences usually have a 1.5 block hitbox, but um, they only have a one high visual hitbox, so if you move this around, then uh, the hitbox will also be one high, and then we have kind of a one high fence right here, so I can jump up here without any problems, because they um, only have a one high hitbox while in block 36 form. So that's basically the hitbox. Now, why do we need the hitbox? Um, if a block 36 tries to push entities, and an entity intersects with the hitbox of a block 36, or with the hitbox of a block 36 previously had, I will explain that in a moment, then the entity will get moved in front of a block 36, if that's possible without collisions. And if slam blocks are involved, then there's some motion stuff, which I don't want to go over here. So for example, right here, we have um, a block fetch 6, the hitbox is over here, and here we have an entity. The entity intersects with um, the hitbox of the block fetch 6. Now, um, when the block fetch 6 gets processed, it first checks whether the progress is 1. Uh, this is not the case, so it does nothing. Then it increases the progress by 1 half, so it goes over here. Then it checks if the entity collides with the current hitbox or with the previous hitbox, so it looks whether the arm is done somewhere in here, and if it is, then the um, armor stand will get moved in front of the hitbox, in front of the block 36, if it's possible, without collision. If there are collisions, then the armor stand just gets moved as far as possible until he collides, so he will be against this block. That's basically um, the entire behavior. And what's kind of interesting is when a piston retracts, um, then it will become a block 36 of a piston, um, so if I depower this piston, then we will get um, a block fetch 6 right here. Um, the hitbox will be right here, and it will be a piston facing in this direction, and it will be retracting. So we ha will have a full hitbox of center, and we will have a piston here. And what this um, means is that if we 
have um if you have this situation and I flick this lever off and I will I will intersect the hitbox of the block 36 you will get teleported on in front of the block 36 and that's basically um, the behavior and what's kind of interesting is that um, if you retract a piston you get the same block 36 as if you um, pull a piston and retract them that way so if I depower this lever then the block 36 we will get over here will be the exact same block 36 we will get over here from this piston and that's kind of interesting because they look different client side but they are the same server side that's kind of interesting and um, now this behavior introduces some bugs for example if I unpower this piston and move forward then I will glitch into the piston because the block 36 will be over here um, above the lever but the hitbox will be over here and then I can walk through and as I already showed if we retract this piston then this armor stand will kind of get teleported through the piston and um, we get some very interesting things if we have multiple block 36 interacting with each other um, so if you have multiple tile entities the tile entities will get processed in the order in which they got created so right here for example we have um, two pistons we will power them at the same time but this one will be powered first because um, repeaters have a lower tile tech priority so if I put, um, click this lever what will happen first um, the block 36 of this piston will move me over half a block when the block 36 of this piston will move over half a block then this piston will, will move me over half a block and then this one then I will get teleported over here and what's interesting is that I get pushed um, by multiple block 36 um, in one game tick now over here I just reverse the update order so um, if I click this lever what will happen first the first one will go um, half a block forward then this one will try to push me over but since there's a hitbox in the way, um, I will not get pushed over all the way, but only until I intersect with the hitbox. And when the, this one fully extends, then the other one fully extends, and I will get stuck in the middle. Um, so we can see that with this we can transport it very quickly and for update order matters. And um, I have a very nice demonstration right here, where five pistons push you in one single game tick, this looks like this. So basically, and I can walk you through this one. I will just get some clay, so we can mark out the order. So um, when you click this lever, this piston will get posted first. Then we have an instant repeater, and this one will get posted second. Then we have an instant repeater, and this piston down here will get posted first. And we have an instant repeater. This one is fourth, and then we have an instant repeater, and this one is fifth. So what will happen is, um, first this piston will get processed and it will push me up half a block. Then this one will get processed and will push me over half a block. Then this piston down here will get processed and he will push me up half a block. Then this piston here will get processed and push me over half a block. Then this piston down here will get processed and push me over half a block and all that happens in one single game tick and um, you might be able to see that this can allow for fast transportation if it's done um, repeatedly um, because there's not really a hard limit because you can push a player as many times as you want in one single game tick if it works out spatially um, now um, I want to show another thing that does not work it's right here um, so I will walk you through this one and I will explain the idea and why it doesn't work. Um, so the idea here would be um, first we activate this piston with a COT pulse and then this one. And so we get pulled through this one and then we get pulled through this one. But this doesn't work. Um, because we can see we get stuck in the middle. And the reason for this is, um, is that first all the pistons get processed and then the tile entities get processed. First all the block 46 get created and let's say we have an armor stand thing right here. First all the block 36 get created and they all have hitboxes and when one of the block 36 get processed after each other, so first one this one gets processed, we'll move the um, armor stand forward but the armor stand will get um, pushed all the way because there's a hitbox in the way and um, since he's against the hitbox he doesn't collide with it so the hitbox just goes um, moves without pulling the armor stand along. It's basically like First pushing the armor stand against this block and then pulling this block and it 
won't pull the armor stand because the armor stand doesn't intersect with the block. That's the basic problem. So um, we can't um, we can't do multiple of these through block pulling in one single game tick. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, let's say it doesn't work reliably and I've got to do some research but I don't want to do some research now. Anyway, um, this stuff over here works reliably, the other stuff doesn't and I have no idea what happened right there. Um, but anyway, what we can do is we can combine true piston pulling with the uh, with stuff with the slabs where we pull the player through one piston and when we push him half a block, half a block, half a block and then in the next game tick we can pull him again. Um, and then we can get some very fast elevators. For example here I get teleported up here in two game ticks. In the first game tick I get pulled through the piston, then I get pushed over here. I get pushed up, when I get pushed over here, when I get pushed up. Then in the next um, game tick what will happen is I will get um, pushed in the middle of this block from these two pistons and then I will get pulled up here basically. And um, yeah, that's everything I've got so far and this shouldn't work. Um, I guess the client messed up. Um, anyway, um, and that's basically how, how my 80 meters per second elevator works because as you can see in this contraption I get teleported from here up to here and there's a um, uh, 4 block difference and this happens in one game tick. So in one game tick I teleport 4 blocks and if we add this kind of mechanism up here again then we um, travel at 4 blocks per game tick and when um, we have 80 meters per second elevators and it might be even possible to go even faster if we can manage to extend this even further by adding more pistons. So something like a piston here and a piston here and then some way to push the player over but it gets really really difficult to push the player over because um, we don't have something equivalent to, to um, slabs for horizontal travel. Now I just mess up my entire contraption. Um, because um, right here I'm using a slab because this piston pushes me over up half a block when I get onto the half slab and when the half slab can push me over half a block but we don't really have a movable half block for for horizontal travel we only have like um, scrolls and scrolls are not movable um, now you might think well when we don't use scrolls then we use something like fences and then maybe another block which sticks out only two pixels from a block like like a sign and then you can move we, with the sign half a block onto the fence and then with the fence we can move half a block onto the sign the problem is signs aren't movable well if signs are movable then we maybe can use um, trapdoors so we move half a block from the trapdoor then we are quite correctly aligned so we can move in front of a flower pot and then the flower pot pushes over and the problem is flower pots are unmovable. Um, and there's not really an equivalent to a slab. Um, so if you want to move over horizontally one block in one single game tick you need at least um, three piston movements for while for this we only need two so this one pushes me over half a block and then this one pushes me over the other block and then I traveled up one block but for horizontal travel is more difficult because you need to do something like um, you need three things or otherwise it won't get finished in one game tick so it's very difficult um, but um, I begin rambling and I will probably stop now. Bye!